So in this particular lecture, let's work on creating the right part of our application, which is the food detail component. So the food detail component has to be placed on the right hand side. And we are going to accomplish that by using the inner container component created in the previous lecture. Now, everything might seem super confusing as of now. That is why exactly we are creating the outer container and inner container. But things will start making more sense as we build the right part over here. All right. So first of all, let's go ahead and let's build a new component, which is for the food detail. So technically, this is the recipe component. But to keep things simple, I'll call it as a food detail component. So food details dot JSX is going to be the name of this component. So export default function, that's going to be food detail. And for now, let's simply say this thing returns a div, which has a simple text like food details. And that's it. Now let's go ahead and let's make use of the inner component and see if the food details component could be placed on the right hand side. So in order to do that, I'll go right inside the app.jsx. And over here, I'll create another inner container component. And inside this, I'll place the food detail component. So let's see how that spans out. So if I save this, if I go back here, as you can see, the food details component is created, but it is kind of stuck over here to this left part right here. So we actually want to have some space in between these two containers so that they could be distinguished. So in order to add that spacing, what you could do is if you take a look at the inner container dot module class, we have assigned this a color. But we could also say that, all right, we have this much space. So we want to distribute the available space evenly between these two containers, which we have. So in order to do that, I would simply go ahead and set the flex property to one, which means span the inner containers equally in the ratio one by one. So as you can see, now these two things are spanned correctly. Now still there's no separation in between these two, but you'll understand that the next container starts from here as we have food details signed off in the center of the page. You could also go ahead and set some padding as well so as to distinguish between the two. So let's set the padding of 10 pixels from all the sides. And in order to kind of add a separation, you could also add a margin of 10 pixels as well. So as you can see, now we have margin in between these two containers. So the leftmost part is going to be for the food items and the right part is going to be for the recipe details. All right, so let's get rid of this aqua color for now because right now we don't need that. And here, let's start working on this food details component. So what we essentially want to do here is that whenever we click on a view recipe button on one of the recipes right here, we essentially want to fetch the detailed recipe for that specific item. And the question is, how would you get the exact recipe from here? So in order to get the recipe details, you actually need to have access to the ID of the item or the ID of the recipe which you have here. So if you inspect this, if you go to the console right here, inside the array which we have, as you can see, every food item which we have, it has this unique ID. And you could make use of this unique ID to get the recipe for that specific food item. So our first task is to go ahead and identify which one of the recipes which we want. So for example, if I click on this specific button, I want to get the recipe for pizza bites with pumpkin. If I click on the view recipe button, which is this button exactly right here, I should get the recipe for BLT pizza. So in order to get that, we will take the unique IDs which we have here and we will pass those IDs to these specific buttons which we have. So that will kind of help us to identify which exact recipe we want to display up over here. So in order to do that, I first have to go back over here and over here inside the food item where we have the button right here, what I could do is I could add an on click function to this particular button. So over here, I would say, all right, on click of the button, I want to perform some action. So here, instead of performing that action, I'll declare a callback function here itself. And over here, I would say, all right, whenever I click on one of these buttons, I just want to log the ID of the food item, which I have clicked on. So over here, I would say console.log. And in order to get the ID of the food, 
I could say food dot the property name here is ID. So here I could say console log the food dot ID. So let's see how this works. So the console is opened up. Now if I click on view recipe, I get the ID of this particular food item right here. If let's say I click on pepperoni pizza muffins, I get another ID here, which is uh, this ID, which is, I guess, this ID right here. And if you take a look at this, this is the exact recipe which we want, which is pepperoni pizza muffins. So once we have this particular ID, on the basis of this ID, now we actually want to fetch the recipe here inside some other component. First of all, let's learn how to take the ID from this set of component which we have to this food details component. So we want to take the food ID which is being clicked from here to here. And doing this is quite simple. So we all know that these two are separate components. So this right here is a food detail component. And this right here is nothing but it's the food list component which we have. However, if you go to app.jsx, both the food list component and food detail component are actually the child component of the app. And therefore, what we could do is we could actually create a state here called as food ID. So let's create a state here, which is common to this one, which is the food ID. So I would say const food ID, and this is going to be the idea of the food for which we want the recipe. So along with this, I would say set food ID as well. And this is going to be a state variable. So let's use use state. And by default, let's say this is going to be empty. And what we want to do here is that whenever we click on one of these buttons right here, we want to set the food ID, which we are logging to the console to this state variable right here. So in order to do that, I again have to go back inside the food item component. So let's go to food item and over here, instead of logging this to the console, I now want to set the ID. So in order to avoid confusion, let me close all the other components, which we have, and let's simply open the app.jsx and the food item. All right. So here, when I click this button, I now want to change this state, which is food ID, but this food item does not have access to this food ID. So the question is, how exactly are you going to go ahead and set the food ID inside the food item? So that means we now need to take this state and somehow pass it down to the food item component. So how exactly are you going to pass that? So in order to pass that, what you could do is you could pass this food ID and the set food ID to this food list component, which we have. But remember that you don't have to pass in food ID. You could just pass in the set food ID method. And that method is automatically going to set the food ID to the foods ID, which we have here. So let's do that real quick. So to the food list, I'll pass in the set food ID method. So set food ID is set food ID. And as I have passed the set food ID, I have to go inside the food list, accept the set food ID here. So set food ID, accept it as a prop here, and then pass it to the food item which we have here. So set food ID is going to be set food ID. Now let's go inside the food item, accept that set food ID here again as prop, set food ID. And now finally, let's make use of this method over here. So over here, along with console logging the ID, I would say, all right, set the food ID to food dot ID. And that's it. Now what this does is that it not just logs this food ID to the console, but it will actually set the food ID state variable to the value of the item which is actually being clicked. And now we have access to that food ID up over here. So that means we have taken out this food ID from this button over here to the main app, which we have here. That means now that food ID is accessible to all the components. Now let's pass in that food ID to the food details component, which we have. So over here, as we have access to the food ID, I'm going to pass it down to the food detail component. So I would say food ID is going to be 
food id go inside the food detail make this thing accept the food id so i would say food id and now over here let's display the food id and let's see how this entire thing works so right now if i click on view recipe all right we have some error over here which says that food data dot map is not a function that means something went wrong all right so this happened because if we take a look at the app.jsx we have made a slight mistake here so we have passed in set food data here which should not be the case so this should be set food id and this happened because of the autocorrect so be absolutely careful whenever you're using autocorrect so once we have fixed this hopefully everything should work fine so i'll hit refresh and when i click on view recipe as you can see the id of that particular recipe is passed here now if i click on some other recipe in real time so remember that the ending id of this recipe is 329 so let's click on this one and the id is 663136 so that is being set over here that means now whenever we click on one of these items here the content over here inside the food details component is changing so now the next thing which we need to do is depending upon the id which is present here we want to fetch the details of that specific recipe so let's learn how to fetch the detailed recipe depending upon this id in the next lecture